Good evening. I now call the Winton Woods Board of Education regular meeting to order. It is 6.32 p.m. on March, or Monday, March 23rd, 2015. Would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Seymour, would you please call the roll? Mr. Cleary? Present. Dr. Johnson? Present. Mrs. Burns? Here. Mr. Pennycuff? Present. Mrs. Moran? Present. Our first item on the agenda this evening is our district honors, recognitions, gifts, and introductions. Mr. Superintendent, you have the floor. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, President Moran. The first selection is a superintendent selection for the outstanding artwork. And is Michelle Lopez Rodriguez here? I'll come back to her. She might come in. All right. Didn't she know I was presenting her with something? Yeah. That should make her want to come. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, our next award is the Principal's Award, and that goes to Destiny Parker. Right, go, Destiny. something a little bit different and you're the first person hold it. <laughs> All right. I want to know what inspired you to do that piece. I like koi fish. Okay. Koi fish are very inspiring. Okay. <laughs> what project did we do this on? Was it time? Was it time? I used a folklore story where basically there were these um, giant school of koi fish and they were trying to get up a waterfall, but they couldn't, and the gods mocked them even more, so they made the waterfall bigger. But, okay, only half of the koi fish left, but another group just stayed behind so they could get over the waterfall, because they really wanted to, because I guess that was their goal. I don't know what was their goal for, but hey, they wanted to get over the waterfall. <laughs> so one of them actually did, and one of the gods praised that fish and turned him into an eternal dragon where he could collect pearls and live eternally and happily forever. Okay, wow. you see, all right. Okay, let, let me tell you what would have been the big miss. Okay, here would have been, first of all, we've got this intelligent young lady who can describe everything that she's done. If we just talked about the art and showed the piece and took the picture without her description, is that information lost? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very, very much. Yay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Michelle Lopez? Yes, come in. Now this is the piece, this is the piece that the superintendent selected. So that means I have a fine eye for art. Okay. Oh, wow. She also has another piece that I like, and I don't see it, but we may bring it at another board meeting. And I know that my eye was right, and I know that I picked the right piece, because Mr. Denny liked it too. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mr. Denny? Okay, all right, okay. So, can you, the piece that you did, Michelle, There was a piece that you did and it had the, uh, the bear in it and some other parts. You know what I'm talking about? It's a stationary piece. It looked like they just set it up and you had to draw from that. You remember that piece? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice with the bear, with the value where you had to sit and it was dark and there were lights. Oh, what other oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, okay. So can you tell me anything about who was that? 
right. So what inspires you about your art? What do you get your inspiration from? Because you're very good at it. Um, I don't know. I just, I like to draw. And I see my father to draw. And I think I like how he draws. Okay. So, so you've got family members who are good artists as well. Yes. Fabulous. Fantastic. Thank you. We're so proud of you. Is Amari Brandy here? Yes. There's a probable mention piece by Amari. Wow. Tell a little bit about you and your inspiration about art. Um, my inspiration of art, it just, I, I can't really explain it. I just have like a love for art. It's just a way to express myself in like just the form that I can't really do. All right. How many of you have a love for something but you're not good at it? Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so she has the passion. She has the love for it and she's good at it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We are very, very proud of you. We're going to make sure that you get this, these pieces get hung in a very, very nice place so that when you visit us, Frequently, you'll always see your picture. That is you? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. We're to run away from our picture, don't we? Mm -hmm. oh. No, we don't want to stop. Sorry to reach across you. That's all right. I need to represent it then. I had it turned the wrong way. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Cleary, can we do something at the final? Can we get all of the children to stand up front? So we can get one nice picture. Okay, all right. Um, Wilmer, Wilmer, do me a favor. When you come up to the mic, pronounce your last name. They want to know you. My name is Wilmer Escobar. Okay, all right. So, what inspired you? Eighth grade oh artist. Wow. All right. Yes. What grade are you in? Eight. Oh, wow. Eight. All right. You guys need an agent. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to manage you. All right. Thank you very, very much. Get a picture. <laughs> You'll set. Comes in before I before I finish, I'll definitely get her. Okay. All right. Is Arion here? All right. I'll come back. Colette. I'm gonna read something about Colette. Colette is a student of the month, Gold Star Kiwanis. next to me. Uh, I have the uh, award, the Qantas Student of the Month. Qantas is an international organization of volunteers dedicating, dedicated to serving and improving the world, one community and one child at a time. Qantas, Green Hills Forest Park Qantas Club has been here over 60 years. I don't think we've been here as long as the Forest Park Women's Club, though. They, <laughs> nobody can stand up to Forest Park Women's Club who are here. But Green Hills Forest Park is very proud to uh, present the uh, Gold Star Student of the Month to Coletta. And with this is a gift certificate to Gold Star Chili worth $25. Her explain what chili means to her. <laughs> I'm gonna brag on her for a little bit. Come on up, please. All right, we found a lot of things about you. So, do you mind? You do mind? Oh, no, I don't mind. <laughs> so, this is about Coletta. 
Self-starter, independent learner, service-minded, and hard worker are all words that I would use to describe Coletta. When I think of Coletta, I think of a young lady who's determined to succeed. I also think of a young lady who has, to, who has had to do many things on her own initiative. Coletta has worked very hard over the past three years and has taken a very challenging course load. AP U.S. Government, AP Human Geography, AP Physics, Spanish Four. Four. <coughs> and continues to do so this year. She currently maintains a 3.42 GPA and a class rank in the top 15% of her senior class. She has also been involved in the community service. I am confident that Coletta is ready for the next step in her educational journey. I've been able to, to work with Coletta for four years and have seen her blossom into a fine young lady. Coletta has challenged herself throughout high school. She's a member of the Academy of Global Studies program at Wynton Woods. This program is a school within a school that, which consists of project-based learning and is a globally focused school program. As a member of this program, she has learned um, in a wall-to-wall -wall project based learning setting where she's been required to present over 100 times to her peers as well as to business and community members during her high school career. Also as a member of this program, she's benefited from becoming globally competent as she's completed four years of our global courses including a year in our Model UN Nations program. She's also traveled to San Antonio to compete in the Model US Na UN Nations competitions. Not only has Coletta been in AP classes, but she's also gained many valuable 21st century skills in this program as she's had to collaborate with team members, develop her communication skills for presentations, as well as, her, as well as develop technology skills as she developed presentations to share. Coletta also has benefit from becoming more globally aware as she has experienced many international speakers and groups in global seminar. She has the skills and academic preparation to be successful in college. Coletta has made a difference in our school community and her home life. Coletta, Coletta is currently the oldest child in the home and is very helpful to her family. She has a younger brother with autism and is key in helping to care for him. Her mother currently doesn't work and has a very high expectation for Coletta, both at home and at school. Because of this, she has had the opportunity to be involved in school activities. Her involvement comes from her dedication to the Academy of Global Studies, and he, she has shown much success in this program. Coletta has volunteered in the summers with the Dehan Summer Camp, where she's able to meet with Chinese students and help them accumulate, accu accumulate, no, acclimate. That's what I said. I was, Mr. Trying, Mr. I was struggling. You're choking me. All right, Accl acclimate to the American culture. With this experience, she is reminded to take advantage of every opportunity, and this is evident in her hard work and dedication to her education. And all of these activities, Coletta can be counted upon to be on time and contribute to the team. She has the communication skills and team attributes that are necessary to be successful in the professional world in college. inspires you? Um, I want to be successful and I also want to be able to help my mom. So I work really, really hard to do well in school and to get where I want to be. That's powerful. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Coletta, could you introduce who your guests are? Uh, right here is my mom. <laughs> this is my brother, Alpha, and he has autism. Fantastic. All right. We are very, very proud of you, Thank and you. you represent us very, very well. The, the thing that I've seen you in school many times, and I can always say you always have a smile on your face. <laughs> thank you. Because when I have a frown, you help change me. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Pleasure. Thank you. All right. Did uh, Ariane, did you come in? Keep looking, Ms. Stewart. Okay. <laughs> okay. The next award is the Community Spirit Award. I am really excited about this one. Okay. Uh, the Forest Park Women's Club. Come on up, Forest Park Women's Club.
Now, I'm not telling you what to do for people in the audience, but this might be a nice photo opportunity. I'm just saying. All right. All right, come up to the podium because I'm going to say some great things about you. All right. The Wynwood City Schools is indebted to the members of the Forest Park Women's Club for their many years of service and support to the students of this district. The group's yearly CSAC, or Community School Achievement Committee, awards honors this academic achievement and community service of students at Wynton Woods High School. It is an event of students that students look forward to each year. Additionally, the Forest Park Women's Club sponsors yearly college scholarships for Wynton Woods students. These scholarships provide positive reinforcement to our seniors for a job well done and help to ease the burden of college costs for the recipients. We thank you for your partnership with our district and are pleased to present you with the March Community Spirit Award. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay. Uh, the Forest Park Women's Club has been in, in existence since 1957 and we started giving out scholarship awards in 1976. So we have given out more than $100,000 in scholarship awards to this district. Yeah. We do many fundraisers. We have so many just, I mean, outstanding students that are deserving of these awards. We try and give out at least three to 4000 every year. And some years we have been up to $6,000. So it takes a lot of work and a lot of commitment from the women in the club. With me today, since I am president, and I am just so proud to be president <laughs> of this women's club, because they are such hard workers. They are committed. And with me is Mary Lou Offman. And I see her name out there on the track outside. She is, and Dottie Haas are co-chairs of the uh, Education Committee. And uh, Teresa Rodriguez is our membership chair. So without these ladies and their hard work, it would never happen. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Cleary, are you ready for the children for the quick picture? All right, so back up with your uh, art award. We want you to take a picture right up front. She's going to take a nice picture of you. Yes, ma'am. All of you. All of the artists. All of the real artists. Yeah. Grab your piece.
This next gift, uh, I'm going to have Dr. Holden talk a little bit about it uh, and about what this opportunity means for children. So, Dr. Holden. Thank you, sir. Um, this coming Saturday, March 28th, I will um, leave Cincinnati with 57 high school students and we will be traveling. Um, these are members of the Wentworth High School Marching Band and we will be traveling to Beijing, Xi'an, and Shanghai um, to perform. Um, I think we have five performances at our sister schools and a university in Xi'an. Um, so that trip occurs Saturday, but I want to take this opportunity to publicly thank the Schott Foundation. Um, the Schott Foundation generously gave a donation of $50,000 to help fund the Winton Woods High School band trip to Shanghai, Xi'an, and Beijing that takes place next week. The Board of Education deeply appreciates the foundation's support of our band students. Having had the good fortune of traveling to China quite a few times now, I can say with confidence that this trip will change the lives of these students. Um, so for that, I, I'm thankful to the Schott Foundation, to the school district, to all of the individuals who've contributed, to the parents who worked so hard um, to, to gather the funds. Um, and I am honored to be a part of this experience with them. So thank you. Miss <laughs> Ariane calls me on my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> this is all for the uh, district honors for recognitions, gifts, and intros. Thank uh, you, Madam Superintendent President. Smith. Thank you. Congratulations again to all of our students. Thanks again to the Forest Park Women's Club for all you do and to the Schott Foundation. Thank you very much for that wonderful contribution to our students. We will, um, in conjunction with taking our recess this evening, we will move into executive session. So board, a motion would be in order, please. Madam President, board, I move that we go into executive, ex executive session to discuss a matter involving employment. Second the motion. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call the vote? Mr. Cleary? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Pennycuff? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, and we will return. Mr. Seymour, would you please call the roll? <laughs> Mr. Cleary? Here. Dr. Johnson? Here. Mrs. Burns? Here. Mr. Pennycuff? Here. Mrs. Miranda? Present. Thank you, Mr. Seymour. Seeing as there are no public comments, um, we are going to bring up someone who's normally at the end of the agenda, but we're going to bring you up first. That way you don't have to wait any longer this evening. So Mr. Lanier, our Winton Woods Teacher Association president, please come forward with your comments this evening if you have some. <laughs> don't worry. I can be a timekeeper. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, appreciate uh, you letting me go, Madam President and uh, Board. Uh, it's good to see everybody here tonight. I thought uh, I would take advantage of this time to uh, uh, talk about something I've uh, talked about uh, a few times before and review uh, in all and, uh, and uh, dealing with uh, the uh, teaching staff. And uh, what fun I, I thought it would be to, to bring up a, a quote from my class uh, from Charles Darwin and uh, natural selection evolution and relate that to what we're about to uh, be going through here uh, across the state of Ohio. It is not the most intellectual that survives. It is not the strongest that survives. But the species that survives is the one able best to adapt and adjust to its changing environment. Uh, one of the things I always loved about uh, Dr. Holden is she's always talking about the importance of the ability to adapt to change. And something that the community and I think the board is starting to become aware of is the uh, changing in environment in the, in the world of teaching as far as uh, 
uh, what's happening economically as far as uh, uh, the state goes with the massive retirement incentive, uh, with the stresses of, uh, of the test. Uh, we are going to uh, be facing something we haven't seen in decades as far as the demand uh, for quality uh, and committed uh, teachers out there as so many people leave the profession uh, in, this in this coming year. And uh, as I talked about earlier, uh, just posing a question, what are we doing as a district to retain, develop, and recruit the highest quality uh, educators we can have here? Because as a teacher's union, we want to be successful as a district and uh, want to talk about a few things that uh, I think that we are doing and uh, some questions uh, for later. The uh, first thing uh, that I, I think we're, you know, we're doing a really uh, good job of and we, we have a uh, we have a great team in place, I think, with the board leadership and uh, our administrative team, is uh, with the bond. Uh, if you're going to get the best, whether it's students or teachers, uh, you're not going to get them with a rundown set of buildings, period. Uh, I mean, if you have a situation where a teacher has to worry about turning on the light switch on the second floor copy room and getting uh, electrocuted or not, that is not a positive situation. If you have a teacher having to teach out in the hallway somewhere for the day because the uh, plastic bags are hanging too low in their classroom, uh, that's not a positive e uh, either. If uh, myself, as I you know, told last time here, in case you missed it, if I have to spend six hours during two school days trying to clean my own room, that w was a, a giant puddle, <laughs> And, uh, and all instead of teaching um, before the OGT, that's not, a, you know, that's not something that uh, we want to continue to do. And I'm very proud of the efforts that the uh, board and that the, uh, both the WWTA and the leadership team here are, are, are putting forth um, to try and, and take us to that next level, really put something in place that will help this district out going into the future uh, and all. Um, technologically, and just one more, technologically, that's one thing we don't want to restrict our kids out. We want to give our kids the best opportunities. We want to put them at a level of our other surrounding districts, and we want to have, have teachers that are able to use that technology uh, coming out of college, coming from wherever they're coming, and have a chance to get the most out of our, our students here in the district. Number two, uh, if anyone's listening and is thinking about coming here, uh, we, we appreciate as a board, the teachers union, uh, the uh, uh, raise and steps that we were given back over this year and the next year. Uh, we got back towards the middle of Hamilton County uh, as far as uh, that goes and we have a great benefit plan thanks to Randy and his team. And uh, that's, a, that's quite a, uh, selling point. When I tell people our insurance didn't go up last year, they're shocked, uh, to say the least. So thank you so much for making uh, my job a lot easier as far as uh, uh, you know, trying to uh, you know, keep the staff uh, together on that. Thank you. And then third, something um, that is always, I think the older we get, the more in demand this comes, the more we realize its value, and that is time. You know, what are we doing to help uh, the teachers with their time? How are we respecting planning bells? How are we addressing RESA, the resident educator program? We have so many young teachers now. Uh, almost half the staff in the last three years is brand new to the district. Not all of them, of course, are new, but uh, I mean, what are we doing to give them time? I don't know for those of you that uh, uh, may be a little unfamiliar with the resident educator program uh, for, the, for a new teacher, besides being a brand new teacher, you also have the challenge of roughly, a, oh, 
around 80 to, uh, depending how much wordy you are, 80 to 100 pages of work uh, from the state to encourage you to stay in the field of teaching, uh, which is interesting. Uh, great idea with the mentoring, but the amount of work that comes with it for these uh, young educators is uh, always a challenge uh, and all. And all the time, extra time they're given to complete that is always appreciated. Uh, and then, um, I know we, uh, as a district, we talk about developing these uh, young educators. What are we doing to help them out? I know uh, we've had a, uh, we have a good set of plans uh, so far. What are we going to continue to do into the future to uh, help these young educators out? Because, I mean, the reality is with all the with all the pay freezes going off and the retirements, uh, teachers have a lot of choices. Uh, I hope they'll choose to come here, continue to stay here for our great district. But we have to consider, uh, especially over the next two years, what are we going to do to stand this tide that is, uh, <laughs> that's going on? Even you look across to our neighbors at Fairfield, uh, with a rel even with a relatively new building, uh, losing over 100 teachers uh, last year uh, with the state retirement incentive. So uh, it's a great time to be a teacher, and uh, hopefully uh, we will continue to uh, attract uh, great teachers here at Winton Woods. Thank you for listening, and uh, hope everyone has a... Uh, Great spring break if you get a chance to uh, enjoy that. And I uh, look forward to seeing many of you at the SEPSI meeting tomorrow from uh, 4.30 to uh, 6.30. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lanier. Okay. We do not have a representative from OPSI here tonight, do we? Okay. So we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the approval of minutes as attached. Board, unless you see any necessary changes to these minutes, a motion would be in order. Madam President, I move that we accept the, uh, pro approve the minutes from February the 9th, March the 9th, February the 21st, and February the 23rd. Second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call the roll? Mr. Cleary? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Pennycott? Aye. Mrs. Miranda. Aye. Vote passes unanimously. Our next item on the agenda is our treasurer's report. Mr. Seymour. Uh, yes, for the uh, month to date revenues for February, we had uh, 6.6 .6 million, but we're getting in real estate taxes uh, during that time period. The general fund expenditures for the year to date are 28 million, and we're still running a little bit under budget, which is a good thing. And our year-to-date uh, financial activity for all funds, as of the end of February, we had $21.5 million, of which 20 was the general fund. Um, there were no extraordinary expenditures during the month of February as we had in January. So, Thank you, Mr. Seymour. Any questions for Mr. Seymour, board? Okay. With no objections being heard, let the financial report for the month of February be submitted to audit. Next item is the treasurer's recommendations. And Back to you, Mr. Seymour. Sure. And we had interest investments of $21 million, and we made 4423 That's $997 more than last month. <laughs> Yay. So, a little improvement there. <laughs> Board of motion would be in order. Madam President, I move that we uh, approve the recommendations as stated by the treasurer. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, please call the vote. Mr. Cleary? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Pennycott? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Vote passes unanimously. Our next item on our agenda this evening are reports from Superintendent Smith. Mr. Smith, you have the floor. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam President. The uh, one uh, that I would like for us to really pay close attention to is the April 16th date that's coming up for the uh, kindergarten open house at uh, Primary South, and it's 6 to 7.30. Uh, parents are very 
eager and enthusiastic about getting their kids into kindergarten. And so we're having a special event just for them. So uh, there are other special events that are taking place, but that's the one that really captured my eye. There's also a special event happening at uh, Primary North, which in grade two, Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra concert, 9.15 a.m. So that gets kids interested in that string music. So mm -hmm. we're excited. So kudos to the uh, Cincinnati Symphony for paying special attention to us. Those are the main two, Madam President. Thank you, Superintendent Smith. You are up again, Superintendent's recommendations. So yes, we'll to move. approve the uh, personal schedules in 9.01, uh, Schedule A, resignations and retirements, Schedule B, certificated employee, employment, Schedule C, support staff, Schedule D, extra duty and supplemental employment, and finally, Schedule E, leaves. Madam President, I move to accept the superintendent's recommendations as stated, Schedule A, B, C, D, and E. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Board, is there any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, please call the vote. Mr. Cleary? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Pennycuff? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Vote passes unanimously. Mr. Superintendent, we move to 9.02. Entrance requirements for uh, kindergarten. Um, I'm going to read briefly the entrance requirements and then ask the board for their consideration with a possible change. The Board of Education establishes the following interest age requirements for students who are consistent with statute and sound educational practice and directs that all eligible students be treated in an equitable manner. Preschool, a child is eligible for entrance into preschool if she retains the age of three or before December 31st of the year in which she applies for entrance and has not yet attained the age in which he will or she will be admitted to kindergarten. Board, for your consideration, the conversation is about kindergarten. A child is eligible for entrance into kindergarten if she attains the age of five on or before August 1st. If you look at the surrounding districts, their date is September 30th. All right, we are almost 60 days ahead of, of that particular situation. The other piece is most of the districts around us only have a half day experience. We believe that we could really get our kids up to speed by moving their date comparable to theirs, which is September 30th, because we have a whole day experience. So the language would read this way. A child is eligible for entrance into kindergarten if she or he retains the age of five on or before September 30th, not August 1st, of the year in which he applies for entrance. The board may admit a younger child to kindergarten if the child satisfies the board's early entrance criteria as part of the gifted and talented identification process. Students may only be admitted if they meet gifted criteria See Gifted Education and Identification Policy 2464. A child under six who is enrolled in kindergarten would be considered of compulsory school age. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Board, a motion would be in order. Madam President, I move to approve the revised entrance requirements for kindergarten as recommended by the superintendent and his staff. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Board, any discussion? Um, yes, Madam President. Mr. Smith, I'd just like to point out we did have some discussion at length uh, on this back in 2012, I believe, yes, when we mm -hmm. first made the move um, to August 1st. And there was concern at that time that children um, would not be of sufficient maturity or readiness and so that was the concern and the reason for um, the the request to push the dating back can you kind of address that as to why you believe that won't be an issue moving us back to September 30th well number one um, there's an all-day experience instead of a half day and number two we actually have 44 children in second grade who really should have been in first based on the old rule. Uh, one of the things that the board would have to realize and understand, and I'm sure you do, that a student can enroll in um, that September 30th range in another district and then withdraw and come to Winton Woods and we would have to accept them. By law? Yes. Mm -hmm. We believe that that's what some of the parents did and we want to be very open and honest and transparent with the parents that they don't have to go around 
and, and manipulate us to get what they need for their children. Everybody wants their child to be successful, and we believe that uh, with open enrollment with the other surrounding districts, the September 30th is their date, mm -hmm. and we need to be comparable if we're going to be in this whole game about uh, competing for, for, for students. Thank you, sir. Or is there any other discussion on this topic? Just a quick comment, Madam President. I was part of the board on December the 10th of 2012 that moved the date from September 30th back to August 1st because I thought that was the right thing to do at the time. We now have all day kindergarten and we also have in our vision some more professional development for yes, teachers sir. of those of most tender age. Uh, so I now believe it is the right thing to do to move that date back to September 30th or forward, whichever direction that is, <laughs> to move it to September the 30th. So I intend to vote for this uh, policy here in a minute. Thank you. Finally, Madam President, uh, Vice President, excuse me. Uh, I know this was in 2012, but I would have to uh, say that you and Mr. Pennycuff have not aged at all. all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Seeing no more discussion, Mr. Seymour, would you please call the vote? Mr. Cleary? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Pennycuff? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Vote passes unanimously. Uh, we now move on to 9.03, Mr. Superintendent. Mr. Denny? Thank you, Mr. Smith. Good evening, board. Good evening. You, you should have before you a recommendation uh, from the uh, leadership team about the replacement of a boiler at Kemper Heights, the cost of which would re result in the award for a bid. Oh, I'm on the wrong. It's I apologize. Okay. We skipped ahead. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> yep. Okay. Go right ahead, Mr. Denny. Thank you for uh, for your indulgence. Um, so you, you should have two different things before you then, uh, one of which is the uh, awarding of a bid, which by law in Ohio must take place uh, at a board meeting if it exceeds $25,000 in value for certain specified uh, goods. In this case, it's a boiler at Kemper Heights. There are two there, luckily, so we could continue to operate just fine with one going down. That's the redundancies built in. And I would say that the community got their money's worth from, from the boiler. It lasted over 50 years which is pretty impressive. So uh, we, we do certainly our, our best, our level best to maintain the equipment that uh, taxpayers charge us with. So uh, this one has come to an end though. It would have cost over $15,000 to repair it. You don't do that with a 50 year old boiler. So um, you have before you uh, the recommendation to replace it and award it to Arctic Heating and Air Conditioning uh, local firm in Loveland. Madam President, I move uh, we approve the recommendation to replace the boiler at Kemper Heights. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Board, any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call the vote? Mr. Cleary? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Pennycuff? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Vote passes unanimously. We will now go back to 9.03, revised board policy 8540. Thank you, President Miranda. So this concerns vending machines, and it is essentially a revision based on change in state requirements and federal requirements. Specifically changed uh, or recommended to be changed, and what you have before you is Section C, which basically stipulates that no products would be vended uh, to, to students during the day which would conflict with or contradict information or procedures contained in the district's educational programs around health and nutrition. Uh, and that's very prescriptive uh, per Senate Bill 210. Uh, everything down to calorie, caloric intake and, and uh, uh, balanced nutrition and so forth. Uh, also subject to, to revision in this policy would be Section E. And if I could, I will read that as well. Food items and beverages available for sale to students in vending machines for consumption on the school campus, which is uh, described as any area of property under the jurisdiction of the school that is accessible to students, again, during the school day, um, which is defined as the period from midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of the day, uh, 
will comply with current USDA dietary guidelines for uh, Americans and the USDA smart snacks in school nutrition standards. Our previous policy did not reflect this language. It was somewhat less stringent. And so this really kind of firms that up and brings it into alignment with current legislation. So you have before you the recommendation, uh, the superintendent and the leadership team to revise 8540 accordingly. Board of motion would be in order. Madam President, I move to approve the recommendation um, for the vending machines. Second. To revise the policy 8540. Sorry, it was on the wrong page. <laughs> We knew what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> Second. It's been moved and seconded. Mr. Seymour, would you please call the vote? Mr. Cleary? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Pinnica? Aye. Mrs. Moran? Aye. Uh, Mr. Uh, Denny, just a yes, point of either clarification or information for the public. So what's the bottom line? What's going to change in the vending machines? What's coming out? What's going in? Yeah, what's coming out, it's not going to taste as good. <laughs> 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 That's the bottom line. Um, specifically being defined as the school day as well. So I think when you say school day, that can have a wide degree of variation. So they describe it as midnight to 30 minutes after school. Okay. And um, it, it draws into question things like bake sales and the, it, the just the modern landscape of education is different than perhaps when we came up. But this is all very regulated and it's in the interest of the student's health. So it's serious, but that is truly the bottom line is. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Well, the good news on that is we don't have too many bake sales anymore due right. to student allergies and things of this that nature. So very, very the change true. level may not be as extreme. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Denny. And vote passes unanimously. Next, we will hear from Mr. Pennycuff regarding the legislative report. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, in light of the fact that we had a substantial discussion on legislative matters just a week ago, uh, I would tell you that there have been lots of hearings, but the landscape is substantially the same. So I don't think it is worth our time to be taken through the, the uh, hit parade of things that are currently pending. If you noted last Monday, still that way. That concludes my report. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pinnica. Next, we will hear from Mr. Cleary regarding the Great Oaks report. Well, mine will be just almost as short. Um, last month, I reported on the legislative some legislators coming to the Great Oaks campus. It was a great event. Um, they found out a lot more about adult ed and uh, continuing education for our students through their program. Um, the board has been invited to the 2015 Economic Outlook Breakfast. Anyone that's interested, I've got a flyer here. Um, that's something the Great Oaks always uses to forecast what are the trends within employment to be sure that there's good coverage. Um, it's an opportunity if anybody's interested. And with that, I'll conclude my report. Thank you, Mr. Cleary. Next item on the agenda are board motions. Would any members of the board like to submit a motion or recommendation this evening? Seeing none, we will move on to board comments. Since I try to shuffle these around every month, Mr. Pennycuff, we will start with you. I just wanted to uh, remind folks that um, before we meet next in, in the monthly meeting, the high school musical will take place and it's a music man this year and if you haven't gotten your tickets already um, you're, you're skating on very thin ice uh, it's always a grand fun production I would encourage you to get your tickets early or you'll be disappointed April 17 and 18 the music man April 17 and 18 thank you. thank you that concludes my miscellaneous remarks Okay. Dr. Johnson? Yes, I guess I would like to thank Mr. Smith for my book on uh, visible learning uh, synthesis over 800 meta analysis for relating to achievement. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm looking forward to reading this one. This is going to keep me up at night. <laughs> Anyway, I appreciate that. It, it is around student achievement. So, anyway, I do like that kind of stuff, you know be that as it may. But as I was thinking about uh, moving into um, this uh, particular month, I thought of the word trust and I thought of uh, taking rigorous united steps together, thinking of the word trust, taking rigorous united steps together, 
that's the Winton Woods Teacher Association, that's the school board, that's the administration, that is all of the teachers and the volunteers. We are always asking for volunteers to come in and to help. Well, people say they want to help, but they want to bring us a list of problems. That's not the help we're looking for. We know that we have problems. We're looking for <coughs> solutions. And part of the solution is for the three communities to come together to become volunteers. We have the third grade guarantee that we're looking at. We've got, you know, some, um, a lot of testing. We hear this over and over and over again. So I'm just, again, you know, as an educator, I'm again just looking and saying, Forest Park, Green Hills, Springfield Township, we want your help. Volunteer, get your name on the list. Call up here to the board office and say, I will go into the elementary school and help with the third grade guarantee. Read to some kids. You know, let's get, you know, we, the summer is coming. Is that the time to prepare? Probably, you know. So I guess that's the only thing I have to say. There are building blocks to success. We all have core values. Everybody wants their kids to be successful, regardless of where they came from or where they are, where they are in their socioeconomic status. You know, everybody wants their kids to be successful. So I'm just saying I appreciate the fact that this superintendent has made great efforts and strides to put some things in place with regards to student achievement. Um, uh, Dr. Holden has worked with him and her team as well. I mean, I, they're poised and ready, but if you wanna be a volunteer, call and put your name on the list and someone will get in contact with you, you know, and make that happen. So that's really all I have for comments. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Mr. Cleary? Yes, um, just a couple items. Number one, as we're concluding the park testing, this is a great opportunity to say thank you to the teachers for their hard work. This was a brand new initiative that we've never uh, have ever undertaken. Um, so thank you for your flexibility and um, helping that happen. Relatively seamless. Um, since it was the first time, I'm sure the next time, and we'll be doing two grades, it'll be much better than it was the first time, hopefully. Um, same with technology. I know we were doing technology updates the day before park test. Uh, the state was pumping those out 24 hours <coughs> prior. So it was a lot of it was <coughs> last, a lot of it was last minute from the state, uh, but we got through it. So I'm, I'm thank you to the teachers and the staff and technology for for their hard work. Um, for I, I know some of us were able to make this. Uh, Rhonda Hobbs, uh, Director of Technology, had an open house for a new piece of technology. Uh, it's the 4K, the simplest way for me to explain it is the 4K iPad. It's a 60 inch iPad <laughs> on the wall. Unbelievable. Um, uh, it would really be a great resource. It replaces two or three pieces of technology. One piece replaces two or three pieces of technology that we currently have. Um, that's our smart board technology. This is everything's on the screen. There's no projector. Um, it integrates. It integrates seamlessly with uh, with the internet. Um, it was it was really neat. So thank you to Rhonda Hobbs and Mr. Smith for inviting us out to see that. Um, I could tell you would like to have one of these. It was, <laughs> it was uh, not that it was just a cool thing, as I can imagine how intuitive it is for the teachers to use. You're not firing up that thing. There's no alignment. There's no focus. It doesn't matter what, how much light That's is true. in the room. It's just up on the wall. Kid can work, can walk up on the wall and do the problem right with his finger on the wall, or on the the device. Um, Really, really neat technology. Um, I'm proud to say, even though we may not be able to afford it, we're constantly watching where are the technology changes <coughs> that could affect our outcomes. Um, the funding side will be up to us um, as, as a board. So thank you to Mrs. Hobbs for that. State of the Township, uh, so the State of the uh, Springfield Township address occurred. Um, schools were part of that. Um, there needs to be more integration within all three communi communities politically on where those communities are going. Um, the township Green Hills, and I know Forest Park has all asked for us to assist in that process. 
some of us sit on other standing committees of those communities. Um, it is it is working. So just that was a quick blurb. And then I have one area of concern, um, and this is kind of coming out of the blue. I had the opportunity to spend some time with the police chief of Green Hills and the police chief of Springfield Township, and we had some discussion on the rampant heroin use. And um, they were able to give me, to, to cite some particular portions of the community where I know we have students that live. Um, and these are probably, some of them are parents of our students. And if we have not addressed that in some meaningful way, we probably need to have some discussion to be sure that our drug education program and I'm sure it's continually updated and probably some of it's mandated, but that it's happening systemically. It's happening from, um, it's happening on the, the baseball field, the football field, it's happening in the basketball court, it's happening at the play, that, there's, that, that there is some discussion out there. Because uh, this is absolutely affecting our students. I don't have any, <clears throat> I don't have any numbers to suggest what those, what that is, but that's all public information. We could cross-reference addresses to students, and, and we would know. Don't know that I want to know it, but um, it's, it's in our community, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm very concerned that it's affecting our students. Um, so just with that, I just wanted to bring it up as, as a comment, Mr. Smith, and you know, maybe that something like that can be readdressed to a work session sometime in the future. Thank you, Mr. Cleary. Mrs. Burns? Um, yes, I just want to thank uh, Principal Kendall Dorsey for the invitation to attend his African American Professional Career Fair, which will be this Friday at 1230 at the elementary school. This was something that had been uh, previously scheduled in February, but uh, due to inclement weather, <laughs> it had to be postponed. So that will be this, this Friday. I have attended these before. And there is something very special that happens when children mm -hmm. see adults, particularly who look like them, that they don't necessarily see in their day-to-day -day life in a professional setting that can talk to them about future careers and kind of broaden their horizons and open their eyes about something beyond being an athlete or a musician. Though we have great athletes and we have great musicians that come from the school. Um, but there's so much that's out in the world. And so to be able to have those kind of conversations and maybe relate what's going on in the math class to what can possibly happen in their life as an adult or, or make some kind of connection, it just really can be a, a real pivotal point for a child's life. So I want to thank him for that invitation, and I look forward to attending again this year. You said that was at noon? That's at 1230. 1230. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Um, for my comments, I would just like to congratulate the students who received recognition at last Tuesday's CSAC, I believe is the correct mm -hmm. acronym. Um, that evening we had a program to honor our students who met certain academic criteria and it was wonderfully organized and I'd like to thank the ladies here in the room from the Forest Park yes. Women's Club Absolutely. who assisted with that and had to remake Centerpiece, centerpiece flowers and all that <laughs> jazz because we had to reschedule due to snow. So I greatly appreciate that. I still have my flowers, but I have yet to plant them. Um, also, I wanted to thank um, this high school staff, the students that came and their families for being a part of that event. It was a wonderful evening and the food was delicious. I believe it was Raffles Catering, is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. So thank you to them as well. Um, I also wanted to encourage the parents of our Winton Woods Warriors to take the time this spring and get registered to vote. Um, we have a very important issue coming up on the May 5th ballot, as some of you know. Um, and I wanted to make a point that the campaign for new schools is completely separate from the district. Um, the campaign for new schools is being run by a committee. Um, the Committee for Educational Progress and School Issues. So should you wish to volunteer, as Dr. Johnson mentioned earlier, in any capacity in regards to this as well, or if you have any questions regarding the issue, please contact the committee. They can be reached at Warriors Bond Together, that's B-O-N-D as in David, together, at gmail.com, or contact your district to get that contact information as well. Um, if you would like assistance on getting registered to vote in Hamilton County and or information on how to vote early, 
please contact the committee as well. Um, and that concludes my comments. Any comments from Superintendent Smith or Treasurer Seymour? I have one briefly. Yes, sir. Um, Dr. Holden and uh, Mrs. Denny have worked uh, along with Ms. Ashbrook and her team. So you guys are going to have a virtual China trip experience. You're not going, but oh, it'll feel like you're going <laughs> because the band is going to have their send off and they're going to play some of the some of their tunes that they're going to play it in, the, in, in China. And it's going to be very exciting. And that's Friday at 2 p.m. So you get a chance to have that experience live with the children. If you guys could make it, that would just be awesome because they want to know who's supporting this work. And there are a lot of people supporting this send off to China. And I think that they would just be excited about it. So that's Friday at 2 in the high school. Okay, so it's the send off to China. Okay. Thank you, Superintendent. Anything from you, Mr. Seymour? Yeah. All right. Thank you all for your attendance this evening and hanging out with us after our executive session. Um, let the record reflect that we have the best dressed superintendent in Southwest yeah, Ohio. I should, I should I pattern myself after the treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> treasurer. Yes. And, and meeting adjourned. Yeah.